Welcome to the Customer Machine Podcast, hosted by Dr. Glenn Livingston and Yoav Ezer. Glenn is a psychologist and marketer whose companies have sold more than $30 million in consulting and has trained thousands of marketers across different niches and industries. Yoav is a programmer turned marketer whose companies have sold over $5 million in products and services. Together, they'll teach you how to systematically stand out, attract, and convert the best customers, even in brutally competitive markets. And now, here's Glenn and Yoav. Hey, this is the very good Dr. Glenn Livingston, and I'm here with the inimitable Yoav Ezer, otherwise known as the machine, the customer conversion machine. How are you, Yoav? I'm doing particularly well, Glenn. Thank you. Why are you doing particularly well? It's just fun. Our calls are fun. I'm having fun. It's, it's a good day when we get to record the show. It is a good day. I enjoy it, too. And today we're going to talk about an interesting uh, experience that I had which we're going to use to illustrate a way to overcome price objections. I call this the persimmon paradox. And when do we get to it? Let's go. I was waiting for your permission. Okay. So let me just start this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Master. Okay. So let me just say before we start, the persimmons are my absolute favorite food. They're only available in the fall. They take a long time to get ripe, so there's only like a month or two you can really enjoy them. And I, I really love them more than chocolate pasta, pizza, bread, butter, bagels, black and white cookies, onion soup, salmon, fried clams, applesauce, and maybe even my sister. I'm sorry. I really love my sister, but the same ones are just a little better. And if you happen to run across a ripe one, I might be willing to sell you a vital organ or a non-vital organ for, for a bite. That's how much I love persimmons. So, you know, can I ask you questions? Sure. Do I love persimmons? I think so. Maybe okay. even more than your sister. You know what? This is getting to be a habit. You're willing to sell your sister for a ride down the mountain. <laughs> and now you're selling her for persimmons. I, 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 you know what? She's actually been fabulous this last couple of months. I've been going through a crisis at home, and um, she's been absolutely fabulous. So I wouldn't actually sell, Laurie. I wouldn't actually sell you. It's just a joke. Maybe. <laughs> so, anyway, I, I walked into Whole Foods, and I'm going to tell you the end of this story is I bought um, more persimmons than you've ever seen in anybody's house before. Um, but it wasn't that easy for me to convince myself to buy them, and what I went through really illustrates the pricing objections that your customers have before they will pay anything but a commodity, commoditized price for you. Um, so I walked into Whole Foods. This is the first week they were available, and I saw a display full of hundreds of them, and I just put a ridiculous amount in my bags. But I couldn't get myself to go to the checkout with them until I had this whole internal struggle inside. Um, so, you know, I, so I rushed over to the display, I put them in the bags, and then I paused because they were fairly rare since the season had just started. They were a buck forty-nine each, so each bag was going to be twenty dollars or more. And even though twenty dollars isn't a lot of money to me these days, it just seemed wrong for me to spend twenty dollars on a bag of fruit. Um, it's almost like there was a big hairy fruit policeman in my head shouting, "No way, Glenn! You can't pay twenty bucks for a bag of fruit." And that right. is the yeah, that, that's the pricing problem that we all have, is there are these little pricing policemen inside people's heads that have categorized, they have, um, they're, they're looking to place you in a commoditized category where they know what metrics to compare you against to see if this is a fair deal. Um, but I did, but I did buy the bag of persimmons, and that means that I was able to overcome, or maybe Whole Foods is able to overcome, the commodity pricing trap for me. And the way that I did it was I made a comparison to how much money I was spending on venti soy decaf lattes with no foam at Starbucks. I learned how to say that really quickly because when you order it four or five hundred times, it gets to be a habit. And um, I said to myself, well, wait a minute, Starbucks has convinced me spending like 160 bucks a month on really air. There, there's nothing nutritious about it. There's nothing really healthy about a venti decaf 
you know, soy latte with no foam. There's nothing nutritious about it. It's, you know, full of sugar, it's full of fat, and, and, caf and well, a little bit of caffeine because it's decaf. Um, and why shouldn't I spend twice the money on, on a, why should I spend twice the money on less than a quarter of the nutrition and a tenth of the pleasure that this big bag of organic fruit would provide me? And because I made that comparison in my head, I moved out of the, I, I got rid of the, of, of the commodity pricing policeman, and I went through that apples to oranges comparison where I was able to put this in a whole different context, and I said, well, if the benefits that I'm looking for are health and delicious taste and fun, I'm already paying so much more money for that, for this other product. Why shouldn't I pay it for the fruit? And that, that's what you'd need to do with your customers. You need to make a kind of apples to oranges comparison. And it's, for those of us that are educated and taught to reason logically, this is, um, it's kind of a difficult way of thinking because you always, you know, as a scientist, I was trained as a scientist practitioner in my PhD program. You're always looking to make an apples to apples comparison and there's this scientist inside of me that jumps up and says, wait a minute, you know, you can't make an apples to oranges comparison. That's not really fair. You should be making a comparison between what persimmons cost here and what they cost elsewhere. And, you know, you know, should you be buying it in a month and buy them in bulk so you get a discount and blah, 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 which I should. <laughs> but, but, but if you want your prospects to buy, you need to figure out what are the benefits they're seeking and how can you make an apples to oranges comparison to take them out of the commodity pricing trap. Um, you know, uh, another, another example of that might be when I'm selling an information product, a set of audiovisual training that people download online about how to stop binging, I compare it to, I don't compare it to other information products, and this is kind of a key because Scientifically, I should be comparing it to other information products because they're not actually getting me, but I, I compare it to what I would charge them to do it personally. So, you know, there are situations where I get hundreds of dollars an hour to consult for people, and I'm kind of an old PhD, old experienced PhD, although Yohan says I'm not really an old man now, but I'm 52, um, and I've been licensed for many, many years. And I said, look, you know, this, this would cost you Five hundred, a thousand dollars, if you wanted to work with me for a few sessions and, um, you know, and, and fix your benching personally. But this way, you can get all the expertise and all the benefits without paying the high price. It's only twenty-seven bucks. That's an apples to oranges comparison. And by comparing the benefits they're getting, which would cost them a lot more in another format, you are appealing to their logical brain. They want to get out of the commodity trap. They don't, just like I didn't want that policeman to stop me from buying the persimmons because I really, really wanted to have those persimmons at home. And by the way, it's years later. I'm still glad that I did that. Um, you're giving them the opportunity to give you their money and get the benefit that you offer. And if what you're selling is actually packed with value, then you're doing them a favor. Um, and I did myself a favor by buying the persimmons. Get, getting the benefits that persimmons gave me, even at that price, was tremendous, and that's really what I had. That's really what I had to talk about today was the importance of making those apples to oranges comparisons in order to do a price justification and get rid of the big hairy pricing policeman. Yoav, you have any other thoughts? Yeah, actually, I do. Um, you know, you see that a lot in sales letter. The the uh, coffee, the Starbucks coffee comparison, and I think it's reached a point where um, comparing your product to a to a Starbucks coffee is no longer effective because everybody does that. Uh -huh. It's like the everybody's copying copying that comparison from other sales letter, and it doesn't work. And I actually saw in a sales letter, one of Frank Kern's sales letters, um, that Terry sent me. Um, he had a whole paragraph about the, the, the price comparison where he listed like six different products, silly products like, 
you can buy 120 lollipops with for the same price, <laughs> and you can buy 70 toy cars uh, uh, or uh, 60 meals at uh, McDonald's for the same price, and, and stuff like that. He used different products to to convey the the value, and he used humor to highlight the comparison. So it wasn't just a, a cup of coffee. It actually made me laugh and think about the, the, the alternate uh, value. And that was pretty, pretty cool. I, I think that what he's also doing, that's a really good point. Well, you made a couple of good points I want to address. Um, but I think that he's doing more than being humorous. He's pointing out all the silly things that we waste money on and, gee, if you waste money on all these silly things, wouldn't it be good to buy something that actually made a difference in your life? Um, I think that's the subtle message that he's giving you underneath by talking about the lollipops and the toy cars. Right. And I, I do think that it's important to remain cognizant of what, compar what apples to orange comparisons are most common online and you know, come up with a new one for yourself. So I, I think that, now it, it happens to be that is the actual comparison I spontaneously made in my head to overcome the price objection inside of myself. So it actually did work on me, even though I'd seen it a thousand times online. Um, and maybe, maybe it worked on me because I'd seen it a thousand times online, so I, my mind was reflexively wired to make that comparison. But why don't we talk about a few different kinds of products and spontaneously figure out what kind of apples and oranges comparisons we could make? Do you want to do that? Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. we're talking about what basically not helpful products that we spend a lot of money on um, when we could spend money on the actual helpful products. So, well, so, so there, there, there are two ways that we could approach it, we could say, you know, let's, let, let's practice what Frank Kern did in making uh, silly comparisons, the things people waste money on so that when they're ready to spend money on something useful um, for us that they're more willing to do that. So we can try that. Uh, but we could also talk about other apples to oranges comparisons which would make our product seem more fairly priced. Um, like for example, the one that I talked about where I could charge you, you know, $200 a session to work with you to help you stop binging or you could buy this product for $27 for the same expertise. Right. Right. Um, so, so give me a product and let's, let's see if we can figure this out. So, um, Maybe a product we can compare to is our soft drinks. Okay. So I drink I drink uh, Coca Cola uh, a lot, and it's actually not that healthy at all. Um, and I think I sp I buy maybe fifteen or twenty bottles a month, which is like a hundred bucks. So I can easily buy a subscription to. A gym, if I just stop doing that, like uh -huh. a fancy gym. Uh -huh. so, um, so, so, but what, what would the goal be? Is the goal to convince you to drink more Coke, to sell more Coke, or is the goal to convince you to join a gym? To join a gym. Okay. Okay, so what we're, sell we're selling is a gym membership, and let's say the gym membership is $100 a month. It's a fancy gym. O all kinds of classes and you know, a pool and swimming pool, instructors, personal right? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So the benefits people are looking for is looking great and feeling good, right? They want to look great and feel great losing and eliminate weight. Their, losing weight, eliminate their health concerns. Um, okay. So we could talk about. Um, so what, what else do people do to try to lose weight? You say you, you could go for, you could get liposuction for $1,200 or you could get, you know, you can get a tummy tuck for $3,000 or liposuction for $1,000 or 
um, you could work with a nutrition a nutritionist for you know five or six sessions, and that would probably cost you five or six hundred dollars. Or you could uh, what else could they do to to lose weight? Hire a personal trainer. You could hire a person. Fifty or sixty bucks a session, and they have to come twi twice a week to get a real result. And yeah, right. Um, so you could do all of those things, but for just a hundred dollars a month, all of this is available. Um, in our small group instruction, you get almost as much attention from a personal trainer for you know literally one fifth of the price. Um, you know, what, why would you do all of those other things when you could do this? Um, but by the way, if I was going to try to convince you to drink Coca-Cola, which I wouldn't do because <laughs> I don't try to sell unhealthy things, but if I wanted to do that, I, I might say something like, you know, you could develop a heroin habit and break, break the law, and it would cost, cost you several thousand dollars um, a month, and you'd be you know, stealing it on the street and maybe offering sexual favors for, um, you know, in exchange for your next bag. Um, and stealing your mom's TV. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Or, or you, could de you could develop an alcohol problem, which isn't, isn't quite as dangerous, but almost as expensive, and you'd, you could get arrested for DWI and, you know, Heck, spend a week. We, 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 it's a pretty costly thing, so. Yeah. The, the lawyer is expensive, and, and, you know, not to mention the weeks you'll wind up spending um, overnight in the slammer married to a big guy named Bubba. Uh, right. So I, I could put together that type of humorous comparison also to kind of, what I would be doing there is telling is telling them that this is a lesser addiction, a less dangerous addiction than heroin, which is true. But I, I wouldn't actually want to do that because I don't like to sell things that are unhealthy for, for people. Um, okay, let's do another one. Pick another one. Um, let's let's pick a high-end one, something that costs a lot of money. Um, uh, personal marketing coaching. Like, why I would hire you for a thousand bucks a session to consult with me? Mm -hmm. Well, there there are several ways that you could go about coming to know what I know. Right, you could, you could spend twenty thousand dollars a month on advertising tests for a year or a year and a half to develop your expertise and figure out what's going to work or not work in your market, or you could take advantage of the you know hundreds of accounts that I've looked at and tests that I've seen to get feedback right away about what's likely to work and what's likely not to work. Um, so you could, you know, you could, you could pay for the experience or you could pay for the knowledge. It's really a lot cheaper to pay for the knowledge. That's, that's one way to look at it. Um, you could, well, that's my best one. You come up with one. Well, you could hire someone that isn't as expensive but then make a lot of costly mistakes. Yes. Um, you can partner with someone that has your expertise, but then you'd be giving away 50, 60, 70 percent of the company just for the knowledge. Yes. Um, Good. Let's see if you, you can do uh, Let's see if I can think of another one. You could um, do the mistakes, lose your company, and then uh, begin build another one, and not do the mistakes at, in the second one. But right. that will probably be a lot more expensive. expensive. Yeah, yeah. So it's and kind it might of a cost you your marriage as well. <laughs> Just on the way. Yeah. And then you'll be like a lonely guy on the street begging for whatever. Um, <laughs> okay, I, I, I think I think we've made the point. So you are looking for an apples to oranges comparison, which is based. Let's do another one. Okay. Let's do another one. Let's do plastic surgery. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm a cosmetic surgeon, and I'm selling you a tummy tuck. A facelift. Selling you a facelift. Okay. Um, you could spend 
Did you know that the average 45-year-old woman spends um, almost $5,000 a year on makeup? Uh, and I would look up these statistics to, to figure that out. Um, that they, yeah, and, you know, X number of dollars on creams and, um, you know, this number of dollars on supplements to all in the quest to look younger when in just, you know, three weeks' time with a simple painless procedure, you could look 10 years younger, um, you know, for only $3,000 or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. nice. that's, my best, that's my best shot. Let's think of another one. You know, what, what I wanted to say, but I just want to say one more thing about the apples to oranges comparison. It, what I want people to notice is that they're all aimed at solutions to achieving the same benefit. If you don't have that underlying the comparison, it would fall apart. Right? So, right. For, for example, if I were to say, um, you know, you could take a vacation to Hawaii to feel younger, that, that really won't help to sell the cosmetic surgery or, or just tangentially because the person is most interested in looking younger. So the benefit is too tangential. Um, so you always want to start with the foundation of asking what is the primary benefit that my customer is after and how else might they go about getting that which is more expensive. Nice. So really the coffee comparison is works well or works works reasonably well for the persimmons, but it's a bad comparison for let's say marketing products or and it's actually it's not the best comparison for the well finish finish up. Because the marketing products provide a different benefit than coffee. So it breaks down. Yes. And it, it wasn't actually the best comparison for coffee. It, it works for the persimmons in the sense that there are both tasty things I could put in my mouth for the um, kind of mood list lift and sensation, you know, and kind of mouth stimulation. So they're both there, but they're not both healthy things that I could put in my mouth, right? Right. Um, maybe a better comparison would have been, you know, I just spent $10 for one large cup of wheatgrass, kale, and mango juice. Um, why in the right. world can, can I spend $14 for, or, or maybe I'd have to make it two cups, right? But 20 bucks for two cups of this, why can't I spend $14 for a bag of persimmons? Um, that, that would have been a better comparison. Right. So the closer you can get That's to the great. exact benefits that people are seeking, the better you're going to be. That is great. Okay. Good. Thank Welcome you, Glenn. Friend. That was awesome. Have we completed an episode? Yes, we did. Are you going to do the episode dance? I am, as we're speaking right now. Imagine <laughs> me dancing. <laughs> I really don't. I really don't want. And to it dance. would be. It will be um, a lot cheaper than imagining you dancing, so you might as well do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, see you guys. Thanks for your time and attention. For more information about the products and services we offer to help dramatically grow your business, please visit thecustomermachine.com. On behalf of Glenn and Yoav, thanks for listening.